everybody it's Tiffany at a different chick farm and orchard and today uh, I am going to show you my new dehydrator from Excalibur um, we've actually been waiting on this for several weeks we actually ordered it June 1st just got it last week and I'm just now getting a chance to getting it out of the box and using it so I am very excited uh, we've been using a really really old dehydrator that my papa gave me a long time ago probably over 20 years old um, so it was getting pretty rough uh, it had actually already uh, started melting on parts of it which of course was a fire hazard uh, we talked about it and decided to order an Excalibur um, just from the reviews to see how it was we had a lot of people that we knew that had one um, they loved them so we looked they actually had one sale um, so we purchased one um, so we're going to open it up and see what we got. They actually had a um, run on the Excalibur because um, everybody doing all this homesteading thing, um, everybody preserving food because with the COVID-19, nobody knew what was going to happen. Um, there were several places that couldn't even get food, that couldn't get out of their house. So a lot of people this year decided to um, do gardens, grow their own food, and start preserving their own food. So um, we've actually been doing that for many, many years. Actually, I've been doing that all of my life. Um, so it's just kind of second nature to me. Uh, one thing we love about the Excalibur, it is made in the USA. So you can't say that about a lot of things that you buy anymore, especially appliances. Uh, this actually came out of California. Okay, so we have a box. And inside that box we have a box. So, looks like we may actually have a recipe book inside this box too, which is going to be exciting. Um, Excalibur does have a lot of really cool recipes online. Uh, you can go to their website and find all of that, um, which is really cool. I actually found out a lot of stuff today while looking that I had no idea that I would be able to do in this dehydrator. So I'm really excited to try it out throughout the season. The extra cardboard is actually not a problem for us either because we actually will take the brown cardboard, um, not that this has paint on it, but the brown cardboard with no paint and we will actually put it in our garden uh, to help control weeds we'll put it in our uh, bottom of our raised beds um, it just disintegrates uh, turns into like a mulch and it feeds the ground and keeps weeds out which is awesome so we have the clear door five tray that's the one that i decided to go with we were actually going to go with the one that was a cheaper model but they were sold out so I got this one, but it's okay because it was actually 15% off. So if you watch them sometimes, they will have those sales. So in our box, we actually have got this dehydration guide. Um, like I said, I've never had one of these before, so I'm excited. <clears throat> but it looks like, from my guess from looking at these before, tells you how long and at what temperature to dry your stuff at. So, I'll be reading that later tonight. That's actually one thing I did not know. They actually come with a five year limited warranty, which is really cool also. Now, I had no idea that that was going to come in there either. So it's the Excalibur Nourish Life Preserve It Naturally Complete, Complete Guide to Food Dehydration. So, kind of gives you some basics. One thing I love is putting my, my food um, that I make into mason jars. I actually don't use that particularly. I use typical regular mason jars. I keep them in all sizes all year long. So, you got this nifty foam to keep it in there so it doesn't get damaged. So we're going to take that out. Now, when you open it, it does say stop 
very important information. Under or around the dehydrator is the dehydration guide. So we found it. Poly screens inside the dehydrator, so we'll look for those. Please completely check all trays and for any additional items or paraflex sheets if purchased with the thing. We actually don't didn't order any paraflex sheets that I believe um, unless they came up with it and I didn't know. Um, but I do have some silicone sheets that I'm going to try out that I bought several years ago for making hard candy. Um, because it's flexible, it doesn't melt, so when you pour that really, really super hot, hard candy on it, it doesn't melt. You can work it, um, not with your bare hands, because it will burn you, but you can work it with your little scrapers that we use. Uh, if I think about it, we'll do a video of that at Christmas time, because we always make hard candy at Christmas time. So, we are going to get this out of here. And it is tied securely in there, and rather than fighting it or not, we are just going to cut that open. at Christmas. Maybe I one of the sheets they were talking about right here on top. Maybe it actually came with one. Okay, so this was on top. I'm not sure what they are because, like I said, I've never had one of these before. I haven't watched any videos on it. I haven't read through the book because this is the first time I'm checking it out, just like you. So, we've got, this was in the back. So, I'm not sure what that is. Looks like a door handle assembly. So, looks like you need like a, that's easy, a Phillips screwdriver for that. Most everybody should have one of those somewhere in their house. That's actually where that extra tree went. So that is actually just your plain dehydration trays. Um, if you look, you've actually got holes throughout this. It actually kind of looks like plastic canvas if you've ever sewn on plastic canvas before. A um, bit thinner than that, but basically what it looks like. So we're going to stick that back on there. And put that back in there. all five of our trays. Now, if you will look here, that actually gives you a basic drying guide, um, which is really nice to have when you're trying to do things quickly and you really don't want to read through your guide and you just kind of want to get it done. I always recommend reading through your guide though and seeing what you actually do. You might over dry it, you may under dry it, you under dry it, you can always stick it in there longer. Uh, and then you've got your temperature settings right here. So, permanent home is probably going to be right here in this area. get a drink. I was very thirsty. And once again, just take your knife and cut that open. This is actually the door. I had no idea what it was until things started to make sense. So door handle didn't have a door on it. Had to be somewhere. So we're going to peel this off. Some people leave your protective stuff on. I don't. And it says to leave it or to take it off also. So that will go on there just like that. Now it has holes in it here, 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 here. And that will be to put the handles on. So we'll do that. <clears throat> you 
you've actually got the little screws, you got four of them, but you've also got like the little washers that go on there. That protects you from getting the screws into the plastic and destroying it all. You don't want to do on a brand new piece of equipment. So, you got your handle, you got your door. You're just going to stick that on there. Best way is usually to take your screw, take your washer, put them together, put them through the glass, and screw it in. Now you'll want to tighten this up with a screwdriver when you get done. Um, I'm not going to because I didn't bring one in the kitchen with me. Although there's probably one in one of my drawers over there. I'm not going to go looking for it. on this one. Oh, lost that screw. I have to re put that one back in there. Okay. have some flat plants over here that I was watering. Stick those over there. And I am going to wash these trays off a little bit. And we're going to stick them in here. And I'm going to show you some of the things that I was really excited to start on this dehydrator. So washed off. One of the things which I have but I did not grow is some coconut milk and some canned pineapple. I actually found a recipe today on Excalibur's website for um, a piña colada fruit roll. Uh, kind of like a fruit roll up and all it is is coconut milk and the pineapple and you just um, blend it in your mixer until it's smooth and then you put it on um, your plastic sheet and they have those here. This is what I will be using and see if it works. But it's what I actually use for my hot sink. Silicone sheets, they last forever. I've had them for probably five years or more. They don't even look like they've been worn. So. I'm not going to use these on this round because I've got other stuff that I'll get accomplished. This week, hopefully, I will actually be dehydrating some kale to make some kale chips. Um, I'm going to show you. I'm going to slice up some zucchini and make some zucchini chips. Um, actually, kale and zucchini we've got a ton of right now, so that's something that um, we've been eating a lot of, so we're trying to find different ways of eating it so we don't get bored with the same old fried squash or sauteed squash, uh, zucchini boats, so on and so forth. So. Okay, we're just going to stick these in here for the time being. And let's see. We are going to go ahead and cut up of our zucchini. Now, um, I usually you want to use a mandolin for this. Um, I actually have an attachment for my KitchenAid mixer and um, that's usually what I use 
but I didn't want to get it out because I'm only doing two. So I'm going to do it by hand. I'm going to make these rather skinny. Um, that way they'll be more crisp. Um, I have never done these before, but I saw a recipe online and I got very excited over the weekend, uh, actually sitting at the farmer's market thinking, hmm, we're going to have a lot of zucchini. What can I do with all this? So I found that recipe and decided we'll give it a shot, see how it works out. So as you can see, most of these are pretty thin. Uh, while you're cutting by hand, you know, you can't get them. Oh, that one. I got it very thin. Uh, that's like super thin. Um, so with a, a mandolin or my KitchenAid attachment, you'll get a whole lot thinner slices, but I'm going to work with what I got right now and see how it does. And then hopefully when I do this later, I can use it and see how they turn out and get them thinner. enough to start there so we're going to take our tray and we are just going to place them on the tray now you can spray it with oil um, you can dip these in oil I'm not going to I am going to sprinkle a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper on them um, I also have got to go over to the grocery store and get some Parmesan cheese and I'm going to, um, the next batch, I'm going to sprinkle with some Parmesan cheese and a little bit of my skate powder that I made earlier in the year. And um, see how that goes. Okay, so I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of black pepper. We have a lot of blood pressure issues in our family, so we don't use a lot of salt. And I always use sea salt, um, Himalayan pink salt. Um, Himalayan black salt. Those are my favorites. Uh, Morton actually has a natural sea salt now. So I bought that at the grocery store the other day. So we're just going to pinch it and sprinkle just a little bit. So that was just a pinch on all those. Now we're just going to take that tray and stick it in here. Next, I have got, I have been saving these up for this dehydrator, so I'm super, super glad it came. I've got my leftover scapes. Um, so all of our garlic is actually pulled out now. Um, scapes we harvested started six, eight weeks ago, something like that. So these are my leftovers that I have not cooked, but I was actually waiting to dehydrate them um, so I could make some powder out of them. So we are going to... Now you can do these several ways. You can cut them up. Um, on my old dehydrator that I used and did some of these, I just laid them out. And that's what I'm going to do here, is just lay them out on the dehydrator. Um, don't know how well it'll work. It might be a terrible idea, but you never know till you try. So that's what I'm going to do, is give it a shot and we'll see how it goes. When I have more time, I might actually cut them up, but I'm just practicing in trial and error. And just excited to use my new toy. So, we've got those in there. Next, we actually had, um, we take herbs to our farmer's market every week uh, that we grow, um, we grow over five types of basil. Um, this is actually our dark opal basil. So this is some of our leftovers from this weekend. Keep it in bags, keep it in the refrigerator, and it's still nice and fresh. So we're going to dehydrate some basil. Now you don't have to actually put it in a dehydrator. It de de dehydrates pretty easily. Uh, just either in your oven, in a dry location, but and putting it in the dehydrator anyway. Kind of saves time. Now we have, looks like Genevieve's base one. So we're going to put that on there also. We actually have Genevieve's basil, basil and large leaf basil. So still nice and fresh. So if you, if you buy any of our uh, herbs from us from uh, the farmer's market, um, 
or here on the farm or get it in your produce boxes it can actually keep for a while in your refrigerator fresh so just keep it in your refrigerator in the bag and it'll stay nice and crisp so layer that on there and then we have I think this is holy basil which has quickly become my favorite basil because it is just delicious uh, very strong smelling um, you can use half the amount, but it has just a slight different flavor to it than it does like with the Genovese basil. Um, it does flower pretty quickly, um, but that doesn't bother us. I cook with the flowers just as well as I do the rest of it. Um, obviously, I'm not a doctor, uh, but there are a lot of um, people say medicinal benefits to the holy basil that there's not with the other basils. Um, I don't know that, but they do say they have a lot of proof out to there, but um, we love to eat it. So even if it didn't have medicinal benefits, it is great tasting, which is all we are really concerned about. So I'm going to kind of fluff that up and straighten them up on there. So we've got our tray of basil going in. Oh, it smells heavenly. If you only had smell of vision you could smell what I did. This is another one. I'm putting it on a different tray. Um, this is some of our whorehound. Um, I have actually um, never found any whorehound around our area. I know my granny always used to give me whorehound candy when I was uh, sick. And so I was going through Breaker Creek in December and going through their new um, big catalog, which is amazing. Um, I think it's usually $9.95 is what it runs. Uh, when you purchase it and it is so worth it it is just it's so interesting to just read through everything that they have um, so much better than just going to the website and it's got a lot of really cool information in it too so uh, if you've never bought one of their big seed books it is definitely worth it so got some sprigs of the whorehound here um, I grew it from seed um, we actually sell the plants and we sell the herbs um, so what I want to do is I want to dehydrate these and I'm going to grind it up and I'm going to uh, use the powder uh, possibly in candies um, but who knows but that way I'll have the powder and I can put it up for later usage so we're just gonna stick that on this tray I have several things that um, actually Shani at Baker, Baker Creek uh, recommended this year for teas and so forth um, we've got the Navajo Sunset Agastache, which is smells amazing. I would have never actually imagined it smelled that good. Um, tastes great in the tea. It's got a citrusy, like a mint. Uh, the flowers are beautiful in it. It's just really cool. And then we also got the butterfly pea. Um, I actually had three butterfly peas come up out of the whole packet, but that is not um, Baker Creek's fault. That is my fault because there is they they warn you and they tell you that there is a specific stratification. That you have to go through and I did go through that to some extent but not extensively and I was actually just fine and dandy with the three that I got out of the packets beautiful um, the it's already flowering has been for a couple months makes a really cool colored tea um, if you put it in lemonade it turns purple uh, so actually hopefully I will have enough and I can do a little harvest on that in a few weeks and show you um, the blue color that it makes in a drink and the purple that it makes into uh, the lemonade. So, let's see. I got the scapes, the basil. I was thinking there was something else, but maybe I am wrong. I might be wrong, so we're just going to stick those in there. And we are going to put the door on, which is it's really simple and easy to do. Now, since I haven't done these before, I'm going to go ahead and look in this and see what it tells me as far as dehydrating. Herbs and spices, we'll go with that. Because that's the majority of what we've got in there. We can change it as we want to. 
Okay. One, you were supposed to preheat it, but I didn't. So we're going to go ahead and preheat this or put it on the thermostat uh, between 95 degrees and 115. So since I have scapes in there also and the zucchini, we're just going to go ahead and sit it on the 115. Voila. First off though, you do have to plug it in. You don't have electricity, it doesn't never gonna work, so. Um, I actually have got my food meal already hooked up over here um, on this side, which is where I'm gonna keep my dehydrator for right now. Twisty ties are sometimes great, sometimes they're a pain in the hiney. So, this one's being a pain. Okay, so we're going to unplug my food meal. I actually ground some corn last night for cornmeal. Uh, we actually wanted some um, fried squash and zucchini, and I was out of cornmeal, so I decided that I'd just go ahead and grind some while I was at it. So. I got actually ground a little over a gallon. So, um, as you can hear, it kind of sounds just like a, an oven fan. Um, if you can hear that. Um, so not too loud. Uh, the first smell of it, you can tell that it's brand new. Um, it's just heating up kind of that new, almost burnt plastic smell, but not quite. Um, sure what it is is just burning the fumes and so forth off which you know does happen on stuff so we're just going to watch it and check it and see how it does and uh, we'll update you later um, probably tomorrow on how everything turned out so thank you for watching um, subscribe to our channel and we will have a lot more videos this year um, and if you have any suggestions or anything that you would like to see just uh, send us a message or comment down below um, in the comment section and let us know. Thank you. Bye.